Howdy, howdy, and welcome to the Tea Weasel, where we pair teas with movies for your enjoyment. Today we'll be looking at... Run. And... His radio... Is he gone? I'm... Afraid so, Blanky. Don't forget this. Come on, Robbie. Say, Daddy or Mommy. Toaster. That's right, you guessed it. The Brave Little Toaster Trilogy. This is the first three for the price of tea video. With maybe more to come. Little Me absolutely loved these movies. Granted, I don't remember all the singing. Or this. Toasters. Or the animal cruelty. Are you sure you're not exaggerating? You don't know the half of it. I just can't believe any person could ever be so cruel. You had a roof over your head, didn't you? I think maybe you're just a whiner. Did little me not care about character growth, plot, or development throughout a movie and only care about what the magic picture box showed me? Nah, I'm sure that's not it. Anyways, let's talk about the tea. Oh, tea, a drink with jam and bread. What if, now hear me out here, what if the tea is the jam? Now does that mean we drink bread and put tea on jam? That's stupid. Today I will be adding green tea jam to some toast. I'll be trying a couple different types of bread with this jam to see which one tastes the best. Maybe afterwards, I'll make myself a PB and TJ sandwich. This is the green tea jam I was able to find. As you can see here, I can't read anything else other than green tea jam. The first one I'm trying here is my personal favorite, the potato bread. Spread on a good knife full around on bread as you can barely see in frame and took a nice bite of it and found it to be meh. It didn't particularly help the taste of the bread, nor did the bread help with the taste of jam. Next, we have the wheat bread, the healthiest of them. Once again, barely in frame, put the jam on the bread and take a bite. Didn't particularly like this one either, it was just a bit dry if you ask me. Next is the Jewish rye. What you want to do is have a drop fall off your knife because this jam is liquidy before spreading it onto your bread. Spread it actually in frame for once before taking a big old bite and finding out that Jewish rye with green tea jam tastes pretty okay. It's the best out of all of them. The last one was the thick white bread, but apparently I didn't hit record, so it didn't record. That being said, the taste was good but it was just too chewy for my liking. Now that we have our best bread and green tea jam combination, make sure you put on a spoiler proof plate because we're about to talk about these movies. Despite Disney's name on these movies, they had nothing to do with them. They only had the rights for the distribution aspect of it. This meant the creators of this movie had more independent freedom to do whatever they wanted for this movie create an animated movie that wasn't meant for kids. There were dark themes at times in this movie, which you might not notice back when you were a kid. If you notice when you were a kid during your first watch, let me know down in the comments. The first movie, The Brave Little Toaster, came out in 1987. The second and third movie, The Brave Little Toaster, To the Rescue, and Then Goes to Mars, were a straight-to-VHS release. If you're too young to know what VHS is, Ask your parents what Be Kind, Rewind means. The sequels are okay. They're not as good as number one, like most movies, but I still enjoyed them. Like the second one had a fun musical number where they explained the interweb. As a thing was tap 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 into the superhighway, mm, computers tap 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 into each other. 
your fingers tap 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 and do the super highway. The first one takes place where a group of household appliances has been waiting for the return of their master. Master. Hi. For about 10 years. After the AC unit gets so mad the master never touched him, he explodes and dies. Not to worry though, the corpse of the AC is in frame for the remainder of that scene. The appliances decide to leave. On their journey, all the appliances are especially mean to Blanky, who deserves it, until the toaster has a meta moment after watching a same colored flower die of loneliness. It dawns on him we should probably be nice to Blanky. And then Lampy the Lamp, super creative name, get struck by lightning and almost explode. Yeah. Kirby the Vacuum has like a stroke or a seizure or something. They don't really explain it. almost die sinking into mud, but gets rescued by this one guy who runs a perch shop, an animatronic slaughterhouse. They escape the building, but end up in a junkyard where cars sing about their life before they die. One leaps into it. This is not a kid's movie. How did I watch this as a child? The B-plot following around the human master catches up to the A-plot with the appliances, and he almost gets crushed to death before the toaster sacrifices himself. His girlfriend tells him to stop goofing around and get down from there before you hurt yourself. And he's all like, yeah, you right. He collects his childhood household appliances, puts them in the back of his car, and they drive off to college together. Which is where the second one takes place. At the college, human Rob, aka the master, is going to college to become a veterinarian. Inside his office are several animals in very small cages, which he's mending back to health, I guess. Uh, these cages, they're, they're not very well made. We don't call them cages, Mac. We call them units. Units? Right. His laboratory assistant is a forever sophomore jealous of the fact that Rob is graduating a year early from veterinary school. Trying to make money to continue to be a student, he tries to sell the animals to a laboratory to be studied on. But Toaster and friends have other plans. Using the almighty power of vacuum tube technology, they hop onto an old, old machine to get onto the internet. They succeed somehow stopping the truck and foiling the literal kick the cat villain. After the appliances defeat the kick the cat villain, Rob proposes to his girlfriend, and she is overwhelmed with emotions. Oh, Rob. It's beautiful. Does this mean... I'd love to marry you. It'll be so... so domestic. The third one takes place shortly after the two of them have a baby. The Masterling, aka Human Baby Robbie, gets accidentally sent up to Mars when the hearing aid was trying to send himself. So the appliances appliance themselves to Mars, and we can only be described in yada yada science. Musicals happen, unfair political systems are beaten in a glorious way showing just how kind and caring our main protagonist Toaster is, and they return back to Earth before morning sunrise hits. Because a microwave can make them go twice the speed of sound. Yeah, remember what Wittgenstein said? We'll be traveling double the speed of light, not to mention folding space. At that rate, we should be to Mars and back by morning. Yeah, if all goes well. I don't know, man. I just talk about movies. I don't make them. Yeah, those are the movies in a crumb trap. I left out a lot of annoyingly catchy songs and weird shenanigans, so you can enjoy the weirdness for yourself. If anything, just watch the first movie, it's the best. I talked to some friends and they all agreed they loved these movies as a kid. They also don't remember anything being super dark in these movies, but have heard people mention the darkness of these movies. So if you're thinking about watching these movies with your family, 
don't. It is not the most child-friendly movie because it's a little intense sometimes. Your kid may not understand that there is something wrong in this movie. And if they do realize something is wrong, they may not quite understand it. Maybe if your kids are older where they can understand more complex themes, they can enjoy this movie without just being distracted by all the shenanigans of the movie. Anyways, until next tea time, watch a movie and have a relaxing cup of tea.